Dartem's sale of our master pitches, which will be held on the 18th of April in Vienna, includes some important new discoveries that have been unknown to art historians until very recently. Um, the structure of a sale is always very casual because paintings are consigned by sellers and we try and put a sale together, but the extraordinary sale that we have on the 18th of April contains uh, many interesting portraits. Um, a very important new discovery, um, which was totally unknown to art historians, but documented um, in, as part of a series, is um, the portrait of Rudolf II by Martina Rota. Um, this is a fascinating portrait because it's a portrait of Rudolf at a relatively young age. He's probably in his 20s. Um, when he is getting slightly plumper, he goes on to become quite um, overweight and we know him as a very jowly um, figure. This is a youthful Rudolf and despite the fact that Rudolf was probably one of the or the most important man in Christendom at this time, he is of course part of the Habsburgs who were dominating Europe in this period between the Austrian branch that he's part of and the Spanish branch. Um, of his uncle. And it's very surprising that there are few portraits of Rudolf that are actually known. He was one of the greatest collectors of his time, if not in the history of art. Um, and the typical features of him are this hat. We were able to identify him thanks to Christian Beaufort Spontin at the um, Kunsthistorisches Museum, where he identified the armor, the Dreiprinzen Garnitur. It's a tournament armor that Rudolf and his two brothers Ernst and Maximilian wore um, to various events. And it is interesting to see that he's depicted in it here. Typical of court portraiture of this period. Of course, Rudolf never actually went to war. So this is just a purely decorative um, piece of armor. Um, he has a ring on his finger which has the initials as AF, um, which are his grandparents, and um, carries a, a baton in his arm. The same armour, the kind of tournament armour as it's referred to, can be seen in another discovery, which is an important portrait by Sofonisba Anguissola of Giuliano Cesarini, um, aged 14. This is a charming portrait by the leading female portraitist of the day and was probably commissioned by Cardinal Alessandro Farnese of his um, grandson, Giuliano, and it's been in the family ever since it was commissioned and it appears on the market for the first time today. Um, Sofonisba was very interested in facial expression and she softens this kind of stiff, rather formula court portraiture, which derives in part from the Spanish portraiture when Previous to this date, Sofonisba was actually working in the Spanish court in Madrid. And this kind of page gives this composition a very informal, jocular kind of atmosphere. And the interest in the expression, the smile, a typical of Sofonisba's work. Another of the highlights in the sale is this painting, a portrait of a lady by Giuliano Bugiardini. Bugiardini is a Florentine artist who was an associate of Michelangelo's. He trains in the Medici Garden with Michelangelo and we know that he travelled to Rome um, in the early 16th century to help Michelangelo on the Sistine ceiling. Famously, of course, Michelangelo dismisses all the artists around him and decides to execute the painting entirely on his own. But Bugiardini was, of course, held in great esteem by patrons of this period. This portrait is very enigmatic. There's an intimacy about it that makes us believe that possibly the sitter was known to Bugiardini himself. But um, she's a very elegantly simple lady who's just adorned with a simple um, hairband of gold. But otherwise, there's no symbol of status or, or great wealth. We have two paintings here. I begin with a Flemish landscape executed by two Flemish masters. Jos de Momper, who executed the landscape, and Jan Bruegel the Younger, who was responsible for the figures, for the animals, etc. It's a very good example of the cooperation of two gifted, talented Flemish artists. 
It's one of the most eminent paintings in this sale. The other one was executed in 1805. It was done by Angelika Kaufmann, who was one of the most famous artists of her time. It's a portrait of a princess of Kaunitz Riedberg, a member of one of the most eminent and noblest Austrian families. It's one of the last works of Angelika Kaufmann, executed in 1805. She died two years later. It's a good example for the art and for the talent of that woman who belonged to the most eminent, most prominent artists of her time of the late 18th century.